Sam Smith leads a worship service for Satan at the Grammys. But I've got a maybe not so expected take on that. The U.S. military shot down a Chinese spy balloon. Or did it? And Miss Rachel, a YouTube channel for kids, introduces her little audience to they, them pronouns. We've got all of that and more today. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use promo code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com. Promo code Allie. Hey guys, welcome to Relatable. Happy Monday. We are back. It's been a few days. Last week, I was out sick. Those of you who follow me on Instagram know that I've been sick quite a few times over the past couple of months after having not been sick, it seems like, for like two years. But starting in the fall until now, I've just, my immune system has just kind of taken a hit the flu. I think I had COVID at one point, but I'm not totally sure. Cold, sinus infection, all that good stuff. But I'm hoping maybe as the weather warms that I'll start feeling better, but I'm feeling good today. So praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And a Monday reminder that I only give on some Mondays. Remember what Elizabeth Elliot always said, that the only thing that you have to do today is the will of God. Isn't that so freeing? It's so freeing. And maybe it can seem overwhelming to think, oh my gosh, well, the will of God, how in the world do I know that? That's this big, mysterious thing, except it is simply doing the next right thing in faith with excellence and for the glory of God, whether that's changing a diaper or whether that's sending an email or whether that's having a conversation or whether that's washing dishes, it is simply doing the next right thing in faith with excellence and for the glory of God. And that is always enough. Or whether it's going on a walk and listening to this podcast. We got a lot to talk about today, y'all. We got a lot to talk about. I wanted to start on that lighter note because we're about to delve deep into the darkness of the Grammys. Guys, the Grammys, you probably saw if you are following on social media at all, they were satanic there was a lot of satanic imagery as there often is in hollywood this isn't really a new thing there have quite often been upside down crosses in different performances or on celebrities clothing they've kind of been sacrilegious um, towards christians for a very long time it's been something that celebrities think is very edgy and very cool but now it's becoming a lot more blatant like you'll remember and if we have pictures we'll we'll pull it up Lil Nas X remember him a couple years ago he put out a music video that was satanic he was basically giving the devil a lap dance and there was a lot of satanic imagery there in his performance and in his um yeah you see that but there are other pictures too of like not just him dressed as a demon but also like a satan sitting on his throne and so there is a glorification of the demonic and the satanic that is a lot more blatant a lot more outright in recent years it seems like than it was previously and so sam smith he is an artist who now goes by the pronouns they them but because we do not believe that biology is bigotry and because we cannot before god lie i am not going to call him a plural pronoun he is a man and so i will be referring to him as he him and uh he performed his song last night uh called unholy and uh, he says unholy was made in jamaica and it was one of the most glorious creative moments i've ever had as an artist i'm guessing he's talking about i don't know if he's talking about the song or if he's talking about the music video i don't know if someone can in my ear tell me what he's talking about there um he says this song is about liberating oneself okay he's talking about the song itself i don't know written recorded whatever the song is about liberating oneself from the clutches of others secrets the song is about a guy it sounds like cheating on his wife and i'm not really sure why they decided that the performance needed to be like out of the gates of hell um but they did And so uh, here is just a little snippet of that from last night. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so we played a little bit of that just so you can see what I'm talking about. You've probably heard the song before. Like, I don't really listen to this kind of music at all, but somehow I've heard it. I don't know if it's been on social media or like at the gym or something like that, but I've heard this song. And so obviously the satanic imagery here is strong. And Kim Petras, who is transgender, so this is a boy who um, acts like, looks like, and pretends to be a girl or a woman, says that he... um, performed this song because he always felt excluded so he's also performing on the song with Sam Smith as the female voice and says that he performed in the song in this kind of satanic rendering of the song because he always felt excluded from religion he felt excluded from Christianity so I guess he just decided that he was going to go full-on Satan worship and so this is a theme as I said that we've been seeing uh, for a while. Sam Smith commented on this and he said, it's time for my villain era, I think. Time to get sexy. So obviously he's owning this and we'll pull up the picture of him and some of the performers. They're on the red carpet and they're wearing their red satanic um, demonic garb, looking very scary. And so they're being very obvious about kind of Uh, their theme, what they're trying to do. Understandably, there's backlash on social media from Christians, from conservatives saying, where is our culture gone? How are we glorifying the demonic and demonizing the glorifying? Uh, How are we so obviously and so shamelessly, so unabashedly elevating that which is wicked and evil and perverse and wrong and dark and depraved, even as we are ridiculing and belittling and condemning everything that builds strong individuals and strong communities, strong societies, strong countries, which of course is faith in a transcendent power, namely God himself who created us all in his image for his glory and for good purposes. And this faith is the bedrock of strong families. It is the bedrock of cohesive communities. And without it, things start to crumble very quickly. You very quickly start to embrace all kinds of moral relativism and relativism in general. You start to not only lose touch with morality, what is the difference between right and wrong, light and darkness, but you also start to lose touch with reality. You start exchanging the truth of God for a lie. So you start to believe objectively untrue, absolutely absurd things like a man can become a woman. It all goes together. It all trickles down. And so now I I think we see, I don't want to say that this is Hollywood's final form of its kind of demonic worship, but it is certainly, it is certainly a final form. I mean, how much more overt can you get? Are they going to just start sacrificing children openly on the stage of the Grammys? Is that going to be the next step that it takes? But honestly, here's my hot take as a Christian conservative who I know is expected to freak out about this. Well, number one, I will say that Sam Smith's song is catchy. Okay, it's catchy. The tune is catchy. The lyrics are awful. It is about awful things. It is completely degenerate, not anything that should be glorified or listened to or anything like that. But the 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 tune is catchy. As, I mean, as things often are that we shouldn't be listening to, they kind of get stuck in our head. Um, but I will say that. And the second thing that I will say is that this bothers me less. This worries me less than the very insidious and pervasive anti-God philosophies that are invading our culture and invading our churches. Like Christians can look at this. People who go to church, professing Christians can look at this and say, yeah, that's demonic. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, we know that's dark. I am much more concerned with the kinds of philosophies and the kinds of ideas that creep into people's theology and creep into people's churches that destroy their worldview, destroy their faith, 
destroy their churches, destroy their families. Like I'm much more concerned when Satan is disguising himself as an angel of light and he gets people who profess to be believers to buy into his lies than I am when he's just out front about it. It's all really under the same category, though, of self-worship. Like this is the end game of self-idolatry. When you worship the God of self, you're not really worshiping yourself. You think you are. You think you're doing everything that you want. You think that you are pursuing your own happiness and what feels good to you. You think that you're the one that's in charge, but you're not. You're not actually the God that you're worshiping. Who you are worshiping is Satan. You can't really worship yourself. Satan would like to delude you into thinking um, that you are the transcendent being in your life, that you are the center of your universe. But when you try to make anything other than God himself the center of your universe, the only other entity that you can be logically serving is Satan. I mean, Ephesians 2 makes this binary very clear that either we are following Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work and the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once walked in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body of, and the mind, and we're by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Either we are in that category or we are in the category of, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved. So there really is no true self-idolatry or idolatry of money or idolatry of things or idolatry of power. Yes, of course we can idolize all of those things, but at the end of the day, that is all Satan worship. So what I am saying is that I am actually less concerned with this blatant Satan worship where they're just out there saying, they're saying, I worship Satan. I glorify the demonic. I like the dark and depraved. This is what I am choosing. I am on the side of darkness. Then I am the people. Then I am about the people and the teachings who say, oh no, you can be a Christian and still put yourself first. No, you can still be a Christian and follow your feelings. You can still be a Christian and do what feels good to you. You can still be a Christian and compromise on all of these things. You can still be a Christian and look and talk exactly like the world. Like I'm actually much more concerned with people like Glennon Doyle and Jen Hatmaker than I am Sam Smith. Much more concerned. Like I would rather Christians, if I had to choose... If I had to like uh, put two things, choose to put two, one thing in front of a room of people, Sam Smith's demonic music video or Lil Nas X or the teachings of someone like Jen Hatmaker or Glennon Doyle, I would choose Sam Smith's demonic music video every day. Because like, you know, that's dark. You can see it. It's there. It's right in your face. But when these kinds of manipulative teachings that say, you know, to love God really means to love yourself above all else. To love God means doing what feels good to you. To love God means just making yourself happy and to cutting out everyone in your life who doesn't serve you. And um, loving God means tolerating all kinds of sin in the name of empathy. Like that is much more, I think, um, a much more of an effective demonic message than Sam Smith says. Not very many people are attracted to the blatantly demonic. A lot of people are attracted to Satan when he is disguised as an angel of light, when he disguises himself as love, when he disguises himself as truth, when he disguises himself as empathy, when he disguises himself as tolerance, when he disguises himself as inclusion, when he disguises himself as self-love. That's much more destructive than anything that happened at the Emmys last night. So I don't think it's wrong for us to like be concerned about where our culture is going, certainly. Again, when you glorify the demonic and demonize the glorifying, like you know that we've gone to a really bad place. This is where godlessness leads us. And there is literally no limit to the perversion and the depravity and the death and destruction that we will see from blatant Satan worship. I mean, we've seen that throughout history. Paganism isn't new. Satan worship isn't new. It's existed almost since the beginning of time. And it has always led to child sacrifice, the sacrifice of the most vulnerable, exchanging the truth of God for a lie. 
It has always led to widespread death and destruction and corruption and evil. And it will continue to. I mean, that's why we care about the culture wars. That's why we care about politics. That's why we as Christians infuse light into every sphere that we occupy. We don't just keep our faith to ourselves. One, because we want to share the gospel and we believe in the Great Commission, but also because we care about the country and the culture in which God has providentially placed us. And we want it to be better because a culture that is run by Satan ends in the exploitation of the most vulnerable. And so, yeah, we care about the culture wars. We care about the direction the culture is going. But I think that we need to make sure that we are focusing our energy on the much more hidden and the much more dangerous and the much more uh, effective strategies of Satan that we see in the different kinds of ideologies that slowly and steadily creep into our churches, creep into our friend groups, creep into our social media feeds. That really is no better than what Sam Smith said, because it all falls under the category of you do you. You worship yourself. You do what feels good, which, as we already said at the end of the day, is just worshiping Satan, just as you cannot worship God in money. You can't worship God in sex. You can't worship God in yourself. You can't worship God in your feelings. Those two things cannot coincide. God graciously is a very jealous God, and he wants our whole heart, not part of us, not some of us, not certain compartments, but all of us. There is nothing in us, if we are believers, that God will not eventually claim as his own. And this is also just a reminder that the idea of cultural neutrality is a myth. Okay. And so I just hope is like the demonic gets more and more blatant that Christians wake themselves up to that, that nothing is neutral. There is no neutral ground in all of the universe. Every square inch, C.S. Lewis said, is either claimed by God or counterclaimed by Satan. Again, as Ephesians 2 says, the prince of the power of of the heirs. Ephesians 6 talks about we are in a spiritual battle as we speak. Our kids are in a spiritual battle as we speak. Our pastors, our ministers, everyone in our church, we are in a spiritual battle. And so I hope that if there's one thing that we get from just the obviousness now of the demonic is the reminder that nothing is neutral. I think we used to think that things could be neutral. They're not. It's either Satan's or God's. That is the war that we are waging. And I'm not saying that comes down into a clean left-right battle or Republican-Democrat battle. I'm not saying that. There are plenty of unsaved Republicans out there. That's, That's not what I'm arguing. But sometimes they do fall along generally those lines. If you're looking at which side believes in reality and which side does not and which side glorifies the demonic and which side does not. Again, that's not a necessarily saying any side is perfectly saved and the other one is not but i'm saying if you engage in the spiritual battle like you will eventually have to draw lines if we're talking about how we affect the culture and how we affect our world with not just how we act and how we speak but also in how we vote um okay one more thing i want to say then we're going to look at some grammy's outfits because why not um, here, let me, let me do this ad and then I'll say my spiel and then we'll go into the Grammys outfits. Uh, all right. First, first ad for the day. And that is Carly Jean Los Angeles. One of my favorite sponsors because it's one of my favorite companies. I am actually shockingly not wearing Carly Jean Los Angeles today. Somehow, even though I wear them almost every day because I love their clothes. They're so comfortable. They're super high quality. They're really great. Like any time of year, also any stage of life. Like if you're a woman who is pregnant, postpartum, um, Neither of those things, whatever it is, like these clothes really do fit and work in all different seasons of your life and seasons of the year. And it seems like as you are about to see at the Grammys, like some of these people probably needed to be styled by Carly Jean because they made some really, really strange choices. What I love about Carly Jean Los Angeles, it's Christian owned company. She has the same values that you and I do. She's a Christian. She's super solid. She's pro-life. So stop spending money at those clothing stores that hate you and hate your values and spend money at Carly Jean Los Angeles instead. 
Go to CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. Use promo code AllieB for 20% off, excluding final sale items. Always free shipping over $100. CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. Promo code AllieB for 20% off, excluding final sale items. Always free shipping over $100. Okay, so just one thing that I want to say, because I posted about this on Twitter and Instagram, and on Instagram, it got like a little bit of uh, pushback, which is fine, but I adamantly disagree. I adamantly disagree with the pushback, and what I said was, when someone calls you a phobe, or when someone calls you a bigot because you believe in biblical marriage, or because you believe a man is a man and a woman is a woman, or you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him— you will be called all kinds of things for that. Or if you uh, question the narratives about social and racial justice that are promulgated by the left and you're called a racist or a white supremacist, or you believe that Ron DeSantis saying, yeah, you're not going to show pornography in schools, like people call you a Nazi or a fascist because of that, or they call you that because you don't believe the babies inside the womb should be killed. You get called all of those things, which are just, you are standing on the side of truth. All of those issues, like that's not, those are not nuanced policy issues to where Christians can kind of see both sides of it. Like those are very blatantly, explicitly uh, biblical issues that we can see as Christians, like which side we should be standing on. And you will get called all kinds of names for that, all kinds of names. And the response should be, not, uh, well, no, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not a transphobe or I'm not a homophobe or I'm not a bigoter. I'm not a Nazi. I just, I just don't believe babies should be killed inside the womb or I just don't believe that we should have open borders or I just believe that, you know, a man shouldn't go into girls' restrooms. Your response should be, I don't care. It shouldn't be, no, I'm not that. It's, I don't care. And, you know, I got a comment from someone saying, oh, no, you know, that's not loving. That's rude. No, we should say I'm I'm not that. But, you know, X, Y, Z. And then someone else said that, no, we should say, oh, how so? No, that is (laughs) by engaging in that way. You are accepting their premise that their accusation actually matters, that it actually holds weight, that you actually care about being called those things when really as a Christian, those accusations do not matter. They don't. You should not care. I actually believe that that is a very gentle and a very loving. And yes, I I believe in my opinion, a very godly response to ridiculous, absurd accusations that you are a phobe or an ist or whatever it is when you know that's not true. So I think it is a waste of breath. I think is casting pearls before swine to try to prove your character to people who are going to call you those names until you completely comply and agree with them. That is not unloving. And I just, like, I'm concerned, actually. Again, this is my opinion, but I am concerned for Christians who waste their time and waste their breath and waste their energy and waste their their care on on trying to justify themselves to non-believers, especially those who have exchanged good for evil. I engage with those people. I've changed people's minds in conversation and thank the Lord by his grace through this podcast. And I promise you that mind changing has not come from me apologizing or me acquiescing or me compromising at all. Like I think Christians underestimate how effective the plain truth can be. That does not mean that you have to be antagonistic. You don't name call. You don't call names, but please stop caring when you are called a name. You do not have to justify yourself. You do not have to say, well, it's not transphobic or it's not against trans rights to believe that a man shouldn't go, you know, compete against women in soccer or surfing or whatever. It's just stop even giving the caveat. Do not justify yourself to people who will not take your justification. They don't care. Isn't that freeing? Isn't that liberating? Isn't that part of what comes with the gospel? That we know who we are in Christ, that we have become a new creation It is no longer we who live, but him who lives in us. And so all of our worth, all of our identity, 
Our name actually comes from him. So it does not matter what the world calls you when you stand for that, which is good and right and true. Like, isn't that part of that freedom? And so when I see Christians say, oh, no, that's mean to say I don't care. Okay, you waste your energy on that. Like, okay, if that's how you want to spend your time, you want to continue wasting time answering fools according to their folly. You want to continue to give into the premises of or the the premise of their argument continually. Like I sometimes wonder if those Christians have ever actually effectively engaged with someone with whom they disagree. I'm just not sure. I mean, there are so many cases within the church where Christians and professing Christians believe that they are going to be able to win over a non-believer by having the right tone or um, by saying just the right thing or compromising just a little bit. And it doesn't work. Again, I, I we can be very kind and very gentle and very loving, but that does not mean that we have the caveat or nuance one bit what God's word says. Like when people do that, when people are like start to defend themselves against like all this name calling, again, I think it is basically saying like you think that you are more loving than what God's word says, that you have to kind of soften the blow. You kind of have to like nuance it a little bit because Genesis 127 is like a little too harsh. Romans 1 is a little too harsh. Matthew 19, 4 through 5 is a little bit too harsh. Psalm 139 is a little bit too harsh. So you have to say, well, I'm not an X, Y, Z. I just believe what the Bible says. No, just say, I just believe what the Bible says. Look, this is, this is what I believe. I just believe in science. I just believe in, you know, whatever it is that your stance is. That should be very freeing to you. And Christian, like if you were someone who believes that that is rude, come on. I think that like our our hypersensitivity as Christians to, to like tone and perceived rudeness just because someone said something plainly, I think that is part of why we are where we are. Like we have been deluded into thinking that it is nicer to not say that which is true unapologetically and plainly. There are times when I read the Gospels and I read what Jesus says or I read what Paul says in any of the epistles and I'm like, that was harsh. Like, I th- I'm like, couldn't he have like said that a little bit nicer? Like, that was kind of sarcastic. That, that, that tone seems rude to me. And then I have to check myself and say, who the heck am I? That I would be tone policing the Alpha and Omega, like the God of the universe, the God who, as 1 John 4, 8 says, is love. So if something seems too harsh to me and Jesus says it or God's word says it, then it is my fault. It is my feelings that are the problem. Like I think we as Christians today are far too concerned with, oh, maybe we shouldn't say things that are true, or that person said something that's true. That person says they don't care about being called a transphobe. That's mean. Okay, well, you just waste your time and your energy doing that. The rest of us are busy doing other things (laughs) that matter, and hopefully, by the grace of God, are effective. Okay, now, let's look at some of this Grammy's fashion. Um, Yeah, let's pull out this Grammy's fashion, and then we'll talk about a couple other things in a second. Let's look at... um, Let's look at the first one. The first one that we got. And I'm going to get some commentary for my team too. So we got Cardi B, right? Is this Cardi Mm -hmm. B? Yep, it's Cardi B. Is this what she was wearing the whole night last night? No, I believe she had a couple different outfits. Okay. I think I saw her other outfit. I didn't see this. I don't mind this. Like, I think that she looks good. I mean, obviously, it's not like the most modest thing in the world. But I kind of like it. I think the royal blue is really pretty on her. What do Mm -hmm. y'all think? I love it. You do? Yeah. (laughs) I mean, like, you never wear this, like, out to dinner. But for an awards show, (laughs) I think it's really cool. Is is it a hat or is it a veil? I think it's just part of the dress. Kind of a veil. Okay. I gotcha. I think the royal blue is, like, stunning on her. I think she's giving, like, Violet from Willy Wonka vibes to me. (laughs) Okay. You don't like it. Got it. (gasps) 
I I think the shape is really good <laughs> on her. Does she have like a satchel over there? I can't ever see because of the lights. What's I think on like that's her the hip? Gram- or the CBS logo? Oh oh, on the other like, side, like-, like on her hip. Oh. Yeah, I think it's just fabric. It's just fabric? Yeah. Okay. So I I obviously wouldn't wear this, but I think that she I think that she looks good. Way better than the other outfit that I saw that I thought was like leathery something. Mm. Um okay, next one. Um, okay, I only know who this is because it says it on my document. Otherwise I wouldn't. <laughs> um this is Shania Twain. Right? Yeah, I didn't know who it was either until Victoria told me. Okay, what a waste of beauty. She is like one of, I think, one of the most beautiful people, and she looks like an advertisement for Chick fil A. (laughs) Dylan said she looks like a Disney villain. That's true, too. Like some kind of modern Cruella de Vil. So, for people who are not watching this, uh, or yeah, who are just listening to this, she's got like a suit on with massive bell bottoms, which I like a bell bottom, but it's a white suit with like big black polka dots and a top hat. She also kind of looks like she could be a villain in like Alice in Wonderland. And then she's got bright red hair, which I'm guessing is a wig and bright red lipstick. It's just, it does nothing for her at all. What do y'all think? I think it looks like she got the wig off of Party City. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not here for, she's a 57 year old woman and it's just, the outfit is very confusing (laughs) to me. Yeah. It's a whole lot. I agree. I agree. I think it's weird. I mean, she does, she is kind of complimenting like the red carpet and the white and black background. So I'll give her that. I don't know. Maybe when you're that successful, like Shania Twain, you just don't, just don't care anymore. And maybe when you're 57, you just don't care. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, okay. Taylor Swift. Let's look at her. I already saw this. Okay. I already know that y'all are probably going to love it. <laughs> yeah. Victoria and Brie. Um, I mean, she looks amazing. Obviously. Like, mm-hmm. she looks... She Like, this is a great shape for her. I don't... <sighs> It's not my favorite. I also don't like the earrings at all, but I'm not like a big earring person. Um, I I don't like the earrings, but I think, yeah, I think the dress is pretty. I think that she looks great. What do y'all think? I think, look, I mean, you know, I'm a Swifty, but I rarely does she miss quite honest. True. I agree. And I feel like this is one of my favorites ever. Okay. Okay. I think it's like the right amount of like, it's like relatively modest compared to what people yeah. normally wear. Yeah. It's just um, a midriff. Yeah, just a midriff. Um I don't know, I love it. I just think it's unique and yeah. I love the color. It's yeah, great. Yeah. Color looks good on her, Victoria. What I do you think, think she looks like her album and I just mm-hmm. think that is I don't know. It's the coolest. Mm. I think she looks fabulous. Yeah. No, I think that I think she does look good. And you're right. Bree, she doesn't really have like a lot of weird statement dresses that's that's what i always think is weird like why would you want to miss an opportunity as a celebrity to just look beautiful like you have access to (laughs) so much like all the makeup artists and the hair and like the tanning and the contouring and like beautiful dresses and jewelry why would you want to miss an opportunity to just look gorgeous and i think that she takes the opportunity to actually look like is beautiful as possible and not look like a freak like some of these people yeah that's a good point speaking of freaks <laughs> i saw this on instagram let's let's show him harry styles okay so if y'all can't see harry styles is wearing what i guess could be considered a jumpsuit a very low cut jumpsuit with sequins and it's got a bunch of diamonds not like not like jewel diamonds, but diamond shapes on there. Um, we've got a lot of vibes going. We've got little girl vibe, which freaks me out. <laughs> we've got clown vibe. We've got um, gay disco vibe. Mm. We've got um, ill-fitting women's clothes vibe, like the episode of The Office when... Um, when Michael doesn't realize that he's actually wearing a women's suit. <laughs> it's kind of in the shoes, the white shoes. Like, I think that Harry Styles is very handsome. 
I think he's very handsome. And I think he's actually like manly looking apart from what he wears. But I mean, I know this is his shtick now. He just like tries to be feminine. But I mean, yeah, it's fugly. Agreed. I think he was going for um, sexy gay clown. Sexy gay clown. That's a little disturbing. And and isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. I like how he has like his chest strategically covered up in certain spots. I don't know if that's purposeful. How do you think someone like Harry Styles picks this? Do you think a designer comes in and is like has five different options and is like, which one do you want? I don't, I don't know. Probably. I feel like someone like him though has more like ideas already in his mind of what he wants to look like. Cause it's very, mm. I mean, I don't know. He's manufactured though. So who oh. knows? Yeah. I, I don't, don't know, know if people pick things for him. I feel like he has enough. Maybe of he has own. a Pinterest board. <laughs> yeah. He has a mood board for every album. <laughs> and maybe. he sends it. Yeah. What a strange, <laughs> strange person. Okay. Next person black china okay is this the person that has a child with rob kardashian yes this is that person. okay well this is obviously hideous um i mean she's she looks like she is trying to be a like a some kind of animal there's a lot of plumage Crow. right like are those feathers or is that a wig it's feathers i think she's just a bird a crow a crow the worst kind of animal. <laughs> um, yeah, she's wearing all like feathers and it's all around her head. It's like a feathered unitard. And then she's got like black tights on. Again, I'm sure a very pretty person, but this is not doing it for anyone. It's so strange how there's like such a wide range of things. You know, like at the Met, I feel like everyone looks bizarre. Mm -hmm. but in places like this it's like okay you've got glam like taylor swift and then you've got just the absurd i don't get it yeah okay let's see our girl our uh, i think this is the last one yep last yep. one. Oh, okay <laughs> this is not the picture that i saw <laughs> this is a lot better um so this is lizzo and she's got um, an orange dress on. The top is like a corset kind of thing, um, but not like too, too revealing. It's got straps and then the rest of it is just like plain orange. The top has some like vertical stripes. And then she's got like a big shawl over her. The picture that I saw, I think, I don't know if we have that, but she had like a big shawl. The, the thing was like all over her head, right? Yeah, she was like cocooned in it at first. Yeah. And then this was the reveal. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I like this actually, like especially compared to some things that I've seen her wear. I think she looks really pretty. Um, I think her hair and makeup, as far as I can see, I think she's like a very beautiful mm -hmm. person. Um, and I think orange looks good on her. Orange does not look good on very many people. So very like, true. I think that this looks fine. I could probably do without the shawl thing. What do y'all think? I love it. I think she looks great. I think it's flattering. Yeah. I mean, it's not like most of her looks where it's yeah. like super revealing. Yeah. It's classy. I like it. Yeah. And I love the color. It's great. Yeah. I like classy too. All right. Very important. Very important subject. Thanks for y'all's thoughts. All right. Let's talk about our next sponsor for the day before we get into some other things. And that is Bambi. So if you are a small business owner you need to check out bambi because you know that hr issues can kill you they can take all of your time they can suck all of your energy and you don't have time for that and you don't have the money probably if you're a small business owner to pay for a full-time hr manager because that can be like eighty thousand dollars a year but you still need someone to take care of onboarding terminations compliance all that so you need to check out bambi bambi has a dedicated hr manager that is available by phone, email, real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And this is all for just 99 
dollars a month. So super affordable, really easy. You don't have to worry about like long-term contracts or anything like that. This is just a month-to-month thing to see if it can help you. It can really like change your business and free you up so you don't have to be worrying about this stuff every day. Go to Bambi.com, type in Relatable under podcast when you sign up. It'll help the show. Go to Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com, type in Relatable under podcast, Bambi.com. Okay, so I just wanted to briefly talk about this Chinese spy balloon. And I say briefly because I feel like there's still information coming out about this. And I will be able to maybe better talk about this in a couple days. Now there's like a really big debate about what this spy balloon even was. So if you didn't hear about this at all, there was this balloon. There were a couple of balloons that we knew of that were above the United States, floating around. And what we were hearing from the media is that they were Chinese spy balloons. They were balloons sent by the Chinese Communist Party to hover over our airspace and to basically check out what's going on. You can see the picture if you're watching on YouTube. I don't know, to look at our different, you know, like, I don't know, whatever it is, <laughs> to look at our military bases, to gather information and intelligence. I mean, it's all a little bit hard to believe that, they wouldn't have like more sophisticated means to do this. Apparently there was one hovering over South America too. And everyone was like, what the heck? Why don't you shoot this thing down? Like, why are we allowing this to hover over our airspace? And we were hearing from the Biden administration, well, this thing is really big. We can't do that safely. Or we're just not going to shoot it down. Like Secretary Blinken didn't really say what he was going to do. He apparently canceled his trip to China to like speak with them diplomatically because he believed that they launched this to spy on Americans and to spy on whatever we're up to. Um, But it was all like a very strange story. And everyone was like, Biden, why don't you just shoot this thing down? Surely, because people are saying, oh, he had to wait until it was over the ocean. But people have also pointed out, which I think this is a good point. Well, uh, surely we have the intelligence to take this out without it causing a lot of destruction for America and for the American people. Obviously, I would agree with that. Like, I don't think that we should shoot this thing down at the expense of the lives of innocent civilians. I'm not saying that, but I do have a hard time believing that with all of the technology and the innovation that we have in our military, that we would not be able to take this thing out or to somehow render this thing completely ineffective without hurting Americans and do it in a very quick way. However, they did after several days of one of the balloons circulating the United States, hung out over Missouri for a little bit, headed over to the East Coast. Um, The U.S. military did shoot it down. I think it was outside Myrtle Beach. And so here's a video of cadets uh, watching the military shoot it down and they're cheering and it's kind of (laughs) cool. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, that's awesome. I think that's funny. I think it's at the, uh, at the Citadel where they are uh, cheering this on. That's in, um, an army college. And I think that they're watching this and, um, they were cheering it on as it got shot down. And so obviously we wish it had happened earlier or, you know, maybe in a different way, because I'm sure that the balloon gathered all of the intelligence that it needed. If it really is a spy balloon, like I'm not totally sure about this story that we're being sold by the U.S. media. But if it really is a, you know, Chinese spy balloon, then it got all of the intelligence that it needs. And so us shooting it down a few days later, does it even really matter? I'm not sure, but I thought that that uh, video was kind of fun. Here's what the New York Times says. The balloon, which spent five days traveling in a a diagonal southeast route from Idaho to the Carolinas, had moved off the coast by midday Saturday and was shot down within moments of its arrival over the Atlantic Ocean. I told them to shoot it down, President Biden told reporters in Hagerstown, Maryland, on his way to Camp David on Saturday afternoon. They said to me, let's wait until the safest place to do it. The Federal Aviation Administration had paused departures and arrivals at airports in Wilmington, North Carolina, Carolina, and in Myrtle Beach and Charleston 
in South Carolina, one of the two F-22 fighter jets from Langley Air Force Base fired a Sidewinder air-to-air missile down in the balloon, which was flying at an altitude of 60,000 to 65,000 feet. Now, here's what uh, the Chinese are saying. The Chinese foreign ministry declared its strong discontent and protest about the United States downing of the balloon. In a statement, the ministry said that China had told Washington repeatedly that the balloon was a civilian aircraft that had inadvertently flown over the United States and its presence was totally accidental. In these circumstances, for the United States to insist on using armed force is clearly an excessive reaction that seriously violates international convention. China will resolutely defend the legitimate rights and interests of the enterprise involved and retains the right to respond further, respond further. Well, what does that mean? I'm not sure we know what that means. I do think it was the right thing to shoot it down. As I said, I think hopefully it we have the capability to do something about that more quickly like if we don't then i would say that that's a problem i mean the chinese are the the chinese communist party they're very likely lying that's what communists do and we have no reason to believe the dictatorial regime and what they're saying that it's some civilian balloon but even if it were like you think if an american was flying something over china that china even suspected just a little bit was gathering intelligence you think that they wouldn't do anything about it of course they would of course they would um and so apparently there was some back and forth between the administration and the pentagon about it but uh they ultimately they ultimately did shoot it down so this is according to news nation the chinese spy balloon hovered over these states that have different military bases in montana in idaho in wyoming in south dakota in north dakota nebraska and and Missouri, all of these Air Force bases. So again, it's just hard to believe that this is um, that this is uh, an accident. That this is just a civilian weather balloon. So there's a lot of contention about this, a lot of argumentation about uh, whether this is a new thing, whether this happened under Donald Trump. The Department of Defense is saying that this did happen under Donald Trump, that this also happened a few months ago that crashed outside of Hawaii and no one even knew about it. And some people, uh, the Department of Defense is saying that it happened several times under Trump and that he didn't shoot it down. Trump is denying that. John Bolton, who doesn't even like Trump, who worked in the Trump administration, is denying that said that that actually never happened and so there is some he said she said or he said he said going on there about what really happened because Trump has been critical of Biden over the past few days saying that he should absolutely shoot it down that he should have shot it down earlier and so um, and so there's a lot of back and forth about what really happened, what administration did what. And then there's also some questions about whether or not this is just a distraction. Is this a distraction from something bigger that the Biden administration is doing, especially if this is something that has happened in the past? Is it something that we really need to care about all that much? Um, so there was this interesting thread that was kind of going viral that kind of questioned the whole narrative about the spy balloon and what's really going on. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Let me tell you about our next sponsor, and that's Express VPN. So if you are looking to secure your privacy online, if you are looking to secure your um, your identity and you are wanting to protect yourself from hackers and from people who are trying to get your data and get your location, then you need to have a VPN. I have ExpressVPN on all of my devices and it just protects me. If I'm on public Wi-Fi or something like that, I want to make sure that all of my information is secure, protected, safe, private, and ExpressVPN does just that. Also, there is um, there is also a cool feature here that if you use a VPN, if you're watching a streaming service like Netflix or something like that, and you can change your location with a VPN. So you can change where you are. So like if I have my VPN on and I'm checking out somewhere, it'll say, oh, we see that your uh, zip code is whatever it is. It thinks I'm in like, you know, 
a, a city and a state that I'm not in. But the same is true if you're watching a streaming service. You can say that you're in Germany. You can say that you're in some other country. And you actually have access to like a whole new catalog of movies and shows that are not available here to you in the United States. So that's another cool part of that because it reroutes your location. Um, and it doesn't just keep you private, but it also allows you a lot of options when you're streaming. So that's cool. Go to expressvpn.com slash Allie. Don't forget to use my link at expressvpn.com slash Allie. Get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. expressvpn.com slash Allie. expressvpn.com slash Allie. Okay, so let me read you this thread. And this thread is from someone named Ar- Arnaud Bertrand. He is an entrepreneur, owner of the website called me and... and and qi.com which explains chinese medicine so he says i took a bit of time to dissect the spy balloon story both how it is portrayed in the u.s and china's response as you'll see the more you think about it the more stunned you get at the sheer absurdity of the whole thing first the u.s story that china sent a spy balloon over highly strategic u.s sites it chose to spy on these sites with a big visible balloon uh, that anyone can see with the naked eye from the ground to demonstrate it have a capability, despite having a plethora of more discreet ways to spy like satellites or stealth drones. Unclear that anyone doubted China had mastered the technology of hot air balloons and why it therefore needed to demonstrate this capability, China chose to do so on the eve of the Secretary of State State's Blinken's um, visit to China, where he was invited And hours after signaling Blinken would also be meeting with uh, Xi, Jinping, uh, Xi Jinping during his visit. Um, He says, the story therefore being that China chose to disrupt the meeting with its own president and to sabotage its own efforts um, in the U.S.-China conflict. The Pentagon said it had been tracking the balloon for quite some time and that it wasn't the first time such an incident occurred. But this time, for unclear reasons, it chose to do a public announcement. As a result, Blinken announced he was postponing his China trip. Now a story from the Chinese side. They said that this is a fluke accident. This is a civilian balloon with limited self-steering capability. And then a piece in the Washington Post seems to confirm this, quoting experts in national security and aerospace said the craft appears to share characteristics with high altitude balloons used by developed countries around the world for weather forecasting. Okay, so that's different than that would be different than what I said. I said that China is telling a lie. Apparently, it could be possibly true, according to this person. The Pentagon itself said that the payload wouldn't offer much in the way of surveillance that China couldn't collect through spy satellites and that the balloon posed no serious physical or intelligence threat. The Pentagon themselves say it would make zero sense for China to use a balloon like this for intelligence purposes when it has satellites. Kind of the begs the question why they decided to make a big deal of it in the first place. I'll let you decide which story makes more sense. The sheer ridiculousness of... Uh, This Red Scare episode is absolutely obvious to anyone with an iota of common sense, except sadly common sense to be critically in short supply. As often, the real story is probably why this story became a story in the first place. And the important context here is, of course, Blinken's visit to China, which could have been a step towards some form of de-escalation, de-escalation in China-U.S. rapport. It was quite easily foreseeable that a story like this, like this one on the eve of the trip would have made it politically very difficult for Blinken to go. A plausible hypothesis is that this whole episode uh, is an attempt by internal U.S. forces to prevent any uh, U.S. uh, China further conflict. And then he also says an alternative hypothesis is that it's internal Chinese forces trying to do the same thing by sending this big balloon. Um, But he said that that's probably not likely. So he's basically saying he doesn't think that the story is true. He actually thinks that perhaps um, the Chinese could be telling the truth about this being a weather balloon and that this is a distraction by the U.S. government for reasons that we don't really know. So I'm not really sure what the story is. I think that there is a a big mystery here. Um, Now, would it surprise me if this is some kind of spy balloon and the Biden administration just didn't do anything about it for a period of time? No, I made this, you know, satirical video about Biden, like asking Xi Jinping for permission to please shoot down the spy balloon, which is, I think, probably how he handles a lot of his diplomacy. 
But we don't really know what went on. So I think we'll have more information as, as as time comes on. All right. Let me tell you about our last sponsor for the day. And that is Start Mail. Okay. This is also about your privacy when you are using technology, when you are emailing. Uh, this, inter- or this, uh, this mail service, this email service makes sure that all of your data, all of your information when you are emailing is totally secure. Because you know when you use those free email services, they're just mining your data and information and selling it to the highest bidder. That's why you get to use their service for free. But with Startmail, it is super affordable. You just pay a monthly fee to ensure that your privacy is totally protected. You get unlimited disposable email aliases to keep your real identity hidden online. Every message can be encrypted or password protected. And when you delete an email, it's gone forever. If you sign up today, you'll save 50% on your first subscription year. So go to startmail, S-T-A-R-T, mail.com slash Allie for 50% off. Startmail.com slash Allie for 50% off. Startmail.com slash alley okay we didn't get to so much of what I wanted to talk about today actually you know what I think I have time for this like very small thing and maybe I'll talk about it in more detail in the future but just to like close this out all right I hate to disappoint all you moms out there who watch Miss Rachel or your kids watch Miss Rachel she's got a ton of subscribers on YouTube she does like fun learning songs with kids but she is especially geared towards kids who are learning to talk or who have special needs or who need some kind of speech therapy because she also teaches them how to do that super cute and like super sweet and seemingly innocent um i went on her website however and we have the pictures of this that we'll pull up and i saw that when she lists herself and the bios of all of her team members she puts the pronouns she puts the pronouns in all of them which is obviously affirmation of this idea that gender is something to be announced, that gender is something to be chosen, that uh, gender is something to be identified as, something that needs to be declared to people rather than something that is innate and observed. And that ideology is leading to the butchering of children, is leading to the erasure of women, is leading to the taking away of women's rights and privacy and safety. So it's no small thing to announce your pronouns. And she is doing that. Do I think she's thinking through all of that? Probably not, but she did make the choice to put the pronouns there. And then there is someone who um, plays in her um, plays in her videos that goes by they them, and they're not um, they meaning the team is not hiding this. And this is actually something that was introduced by this person by using the stuffed animal in one of Miss Rachel's videos. So here that is. Hey. Do you see who I have with me? Yeah, it's my stuffy. Their name is Patches. Hi. (laughs) We're going to be doing a song with our stuffies. So I thought about this and I was like, well, maybe we just call stuffed animals they because do they really have a gender? We don't know what gender they are. But considering the context and considering the person that is delivering this message, I think it's obvious that they that she is trying to make the point um, that an individual can be called they, that you can identify in that way. And so they are trying to introduce this concept to vulnerable and malleable children, which is really sad. And just to close this out and to make this full circle, I'm much more concerned about things like this than I am Sam Smith. Like this kind of stuff, you've got Christian parents who are showing their kid this video and just not even noticing and not really caring and thinking that it's not that big of a deal. Now, I'm not saying that you can't watch any video by Miss Rachel, that there are no videos that are helpful. I'm not because, look, I know it's difficult and maybe that's the only kind of like speech therapy that you can like give to your toddler at the time. So I don't want it to sound like I'm saying, oh, every time you know, Miss Rachel sings and she's singing about like ice cream starts with I, that that is demonic and you shouldn't watch that at all. But I just, I am more concerned about this kind of message weaving its way into seemingly innocuous videos and content that we are showing our kids and the blatantly satanic stuff that we are seeing from people like Sam Smith. It's a lot more effective when it is, again, packaged as light and goodness and innocence, right? All right, that's all we've got time for today. We will be back here tomorrow. See you guys then.